a hard day's job, Jesus asked his disciples to sail across to the other side with him. He got disciples, jumped up at the Yaffa, and they all got into the boat. Exhausted, Jesus found a corner and fell asleep, while the disciples chatted away about all that happened that day at the Jesus Miracle Services. Everything was going great until the storm hit the boat with such ferocity. Not once, not twice, but relentlessly trying to sink the boat and everyone in it. What do you say to a people who followed Jesus with all their heart and ended up in trouble? If the gospel of immunity from trouble is real, why would these guys be in trouble if they followed Jesus? If they had done something wrong, we will all be preaching for them to repent. If they had wandered off on their own, we will be pulling their ears to remind them to always stick close to Jesus and be safe. If they had walked ahead of Jesus, we will blame them for poor choices. But these guys had checked all the right boxes and followed Jesus into that boat. Why do they have to deal with crazy storms? Because that is life. Storms are part of life, whether you follow Jesus or not. It's not necessarily because you sin or because you're not worth protecting, as many often conclude. Winds of life blow toward all of us at different times to upset our lives and plans. It is just what it is, life happening as usual. Jesus did not pray for us to be spared from the challenges of life. Instead, he asked that we be helped to walk through them because he understands that storms are part of life. His will is for us to go through each experience knowing that God is for us, not against us. His will is that whenever we get to that junction where God makes no sense, that we cast our cares on him, confident that we are covered under his wings and leaving the final decision in his hands. We feel disappointed when we are at that junction where God makes no sense because our priorities are misplaced and our expectations are not in sync with God and his plan. You will find every cause to abandon God if the reason why you are following is because of performances, ours or his. God does not love us any less when we are misbehaving than he loves us when we are at our best. If our perception of God is not adjusted to fit his word, we will be disappointed when God is not meeting us where and how we expect him to. Jesus was in the boat. Still a frightening storm came after them. Where else will you be safe if you are not safe with Jesus right there beside you? As if that wasn't bad enough. While those poor disciples who had done no wrong were battling for their lives, Jesus was sleeping. How can he not hear the wailing of those poor folks in trouble? How can God keep quiet about what's happening to us and our loved ones? How can God be silent about the evil going on in this world? Why? But we forget that we are not the only ones in trouble. God is in that trouble with us. He does not leave us in trouble. He's with us through high and low and will be there until the end. But if he is here, why am I going through all this? Why don't I feel his presence? I'm very sure the disciples contended with worse because they totally forgot and missed their struggles that Jesus was with them. Somebody must have recalled Wait a minute, Jesus is in this boat with us, right? That's true. Where is he? We are about to drown. He saved so many. Isn't he going to save us too? Will he sleep on and let us drown? When God is silent or seem asleep and miss our troubles, it's not because he can be disguarded by traumatic situations. It's not because he doesn't care or is at loss of what to do. God is peace and he keeps his peace no matter what. He maintains peace through turbulent times so we can rest in his peace and not be troubled by the storms that are just passing through and showing off. God holds his peace so we can find our peace in him, enjoy it enough to share it with others who are caught in the storms of life. 
Here's how Paul put it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope for you is steadfast because we know that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so also you will partake of the consolation. Second Corinthians 1 three to seven. God is always there with us, whether we feel his presence or not. God is always for us, whether we sense his support or not. God is always with us, whether we think it or not. God is more than our feelings and senses. God is spirit, and those who walk with him must walk in spirit and truth. And what is truth? That God is God no matter what. God is good no matter what he does or not. Until that is settled in our hearts, every storm will raise doubts and questions, inspire fear, and spur us to jump the sheep because we think we are sinking, forgetting that if we are not safe in a buffeted boat, neither are we any safer jumping into the freezing waters of life. Life is hard not only for you, it is for every one of us out here. It's the nature of the world we live in. Do not allow these circumstances turn you into a God accuser and denier of the faith. The winds of life should blow us closer to God, not cause us to distrust the only one who can save us. They should propel us to anchor our faith in the eternal God, not jump the sheep of his salvation. There is no other name given by which we may be saved. There is no other God anywhere and no better God if you find another. Sometimes we think we can work out on God and be the masters of our own destiny, but there are only two and competing authorities, good and evil. Only your allegiance to one spares you from the other. Your faith in God keeps you from the authority of the evil. But the day you take yourself out of the covering of God, whatever the reason, you are automatically, even if unconsciously, signing up for the other kingdom and its authority. There are no wanderers out here without the Lord. We submit to either God or the devil. And the choice to submit to God is not automatic. That's why he gave us the power of choice. We have to choose God. Not only when we pledge our love and life to him, we have to choose him every day, every moment, especially when we are at that junction where God makes no sense. I know it's hard to make sense of God when you are at that junction, which is why I'm sharing this so you can make up your mind before you get there. Life will pull whatever tricks it takes to drag us to that dreadful junction. We can either choose to succumb to the pains and pressures of our situations, which will lead us to question God and to eventually abandon our faith in Him. Or we can choose to be like Christ and walk as He walked through His own difficulties. Although He was God's Son, Jesus was not spared the storms of life. They pounded him on every side, yet he believed until the end. If God allowed his son to be buffeted by the storms of life, was he trying to teach us something critical for the survival of our faith on planet Earth? Think again. Jesus enduring and suffering all of that for no fault of his. Was he leaving us an example we should follow? We can also follow the examples of those who followed Christ. His close friends, who were very much as human as we all are, suffered unimaginable things. Still, they didn't write of God or give up on him, even unto death. Storms are part of life, and we are better off prepared before they strike. 
find the truth for yourself before darkness descends. For then it is hard to tell the difference between the truth and lies. Fall in love with God for God's sake before the reasons that attracted you to him are swept off your feet. He is God no matter what. He is good no matter what. Everyone and everything else may fail us, but God is trustworthy, dependable, unchangeable. He is our refuge from troubles, not the cause of our troubles. To remain under the shadow of his wings, we must determine before calamity strikes that God is who he says he is, no matter what life throws at us. We must find contentment in him, irrespective of what life brings or takes. We must choose to stick with God, whether we live or die. Anything less will leave us short when we get to that junction where God makes no sense. When storms descend and leave a wreck behind, we want to hurriedly separate ourselves from that failure. We don't want people to ask questions about our faith and our God. But if we want to enjoy enduring victory, we must learn to sit with God when nothing makes sense, to find peace in his presence when trouble is everywhere, to enjoy contentment in being his, no matter what that costs us, to just be okay that we are God's and he is our reward. Until we find our hope in Christ alone, the world will not experience the immense hope that is so true and so real in Jesus. As we remain steadfast in the faith, irrespective of what life deals us, we stand out as light in the dark, pointing the world to the one who keeps us so still in his peace that surpasses all understanding. Isaiah explained it this way, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Therefore, be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. He will wipe every tear from our eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things will pass away. God cares more than we can ever know more than we can ever feel, and so much more than our experiences can ever say. He is not sitting in heaven waiting for us to overcome the odds against us. God is part of our everyday struggles. He walks those dreary paths with us, and he wants us to rest in him despite the storms raging around us. He may not show up how we expect, but he always shows up on time. When you get to that junction where God makes no sense and others are jumping the sheep because they are disappointed with God's performance, I pray that you will not choose to go off shopping for another God. I pray that like heroes of faith, you will declare, though he slays me, I will seek and serve him. May our eyes see past the senseless strikes of life. May our ears hear beyond the raging storms. May our hearts rest in God despite our experiences so that we choose him every time. And whenever you find yourself at those junctions where God makes no sense, may the truth you find give you the answer of peace as to why you should believe and not give up on God. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with family and friends. Be inspired. You are a star and it's your time to shine.